You pick what order you want to experience them. Hello, welcome. Hello. Some hot drink and cookies over there if you want. Otherwise, big chair, any chair? Bring the seat tonight. Okay, no problem. Well, hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Craig Spicer here with the Wood County Parks, and I'll be your host today. Uh, welcome to WW Night Nature Preserve, part of your Wood County Park District. Um, if you've never been with us um, before, obviously, welcome. Come back to this park anytime. Um, it's about 60-ish acres. Um, you can walk about a mile or so with all of our trails. And there's also a nature play area here for little kids. Build some forts, swing some sticks around safely, of course, um, and enjoy your time. Otherwise, um, we have uh, about 20 other parks and nature preserves within Wood County. So we hope you check us out some other time. Um, but today, we have the pleasure of being blessed with the company of a Mr. Dakota Garland. Um, born here, raised here. Um, he's been in a few different towns in Northwest Ohio and even went to school just over the Michigan line. Um, but after that, he got his nursing degree from Owens and has been a travel nurse ever since, which has taken him not only across the country, but uh, across the world over to Japan as well. Um, and as he has been on that adventure, he has also pursued the mission of climbing as many peaks and high up places as he possibly can. And he started that big mission with Mount St. Helens. So I won't take any more of the thunder from Mr. Garland. So everybody, please welcome Dakota Garland. Um, hello everybody, uh, like Craig said, I've been here uh, in Ohio my whole life, 29 years old. Um, been here, went to school here, you know, forever. Uh, so me and my brother, uh, for the longest time, uh, you know, we weren't, we weren't big outdoors. We, we used to play outdoors a lot, play a lot of sports, football, not like, you know, not like in any leagues or anything, but just together. Um, then we kind of got introduced to the PlayStation um, and that kind of, we kind of stopped going outside after that until um, I met my wife and we got married. 
Um, and then she, on our honeymoon, uh, we ended up going to Colorado and Seattle, kind of said like, hey, there's more out here to explore besides, you know, besides Toledo and the area. And uh, so we ended up doing that for a while. Um, she was, she's a nurse, I'm a nurse. Uh, we ended up traveling around for a bit. Um, and then probably back in COVID hit, uh, so a lot of us, right, we weren't able to go out and about and do a lot of normal things. So we kind of stayed inside, explored the outdoors and got, got a lot of good experience doing that. Um, we ended up going on a couple trips to West Virginia, uh, doing some hiking out there. Um, but it was the trip to the Grand Canyon. Uh, we ended up going, there's a trail called Bright Angel Trail. You can go down to the bottom, kind of go down along the Colorado River and then come back up the South Kaibab Trail. Got about a mile and a half down and I realized just kind of how how you know stressful and uh, tiring it was um, so kind of tried to get a little bit into shape and then started conquering um a couple of peaks along the way. Got a lot, really big into outdoors. Um, I don't want to say I'm harping. I still play like video games and whatnot. I don't, I'm not trying to harp on like video games are bad, outdoors are good. But um, I definitely, this definitely been a, a good avenue for me to kind of, a lot of stress relief, as you can imagine with COVID and whatnot, working in the hospitals. Um, just being around in general is just not a, not a good time. Um, so kind of helped me get through a lot, of, a lot of stresses with regards to that. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to start off. I have a PowerPoint presentation for you guys. Uh, we'll kind of go through it, kind of talk about the preparation. Uh, I have a short, probably three minute video, a uh, little cinematic video about my adventure. As you can see, I have a, I had a GoPro on. This is actually the backpack I use for uh, Mount St. Helens and uh, Mount Fuji. As you can see, I still have a little bit of volcanic ash on it. Uh, I'll, I'll clean it up later. But, uh, but as you see, I had a GoPro as well. So I filmed a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, the trail up and down. Uh, the hard part was is it was only supposed to take about eight hours to get up and down the trail. As you can imagine, growing up in the Midwest, we don't get a lot of altitude training out here, right? We don't have a lot of experience with mountains. Um, I did a little bit of, uh, I'll tell you about the hikes I did prior to kind of train for it. Still not quite the elevation. Mount St. Helens is roughly, I want to say 8,700 odd feet. I could be off on that number um, if you guys want to Google that. But, um, but definitely a lot more than we, you know, we have out here. Um, so neat, that was kind of one of my big, big struggles. And in the video, you'll kind of to see me as I'm climbing up uh, kind of get winded you'll see me kind of crunch I, I'll show you my trekking poles here kind of crutch crunch over on those take about 10 steps kind of lose my breath you start to get kind of that altitude sickness and at the same time you got the sun beating on your neck you got you know what I mean you got no I didn't bring any sunscreen at the time so uh, that's another we'll go into that as well a lot of the failures that I had that I've learned lessons from and uh, eventually survive so um, I'm gonna start the PowerPoint here um, when it all goes downhill fast, summiting Mount, summiting Mount St. Helens, as you can see, like I had a, had a great time going up for the most part until we got to the end and uh, like I said, was getting a little bit of that altitude sickness, but uh, I'll tell you, I ended up getting quite off trail going back down and uh, kind of into some dangerous territory and we'll kind of, like I said, go into more details with that um, in a little bit here. Uh, but as far as preparation, as far as I'd recommend, like I said, I'm just a kid from Ohio. You know, I don't, I don't, this, this had been all new to me. Like I said, I've been, I've been doing a little bit of hiking, but I'm no, I wouldn't say I'm a hiker. I've, uh, I'm just, uh, uh, into hiking. Like I'm an enthusiast as far as like planning it and whatnot. So as far as I recommend, I recommend like day hikes, especially like around Seattle and stuff. You can get a lot of the elevation. There's a couple of day hikes you can do here. Uh, we have a, we actually have our own national park out in, uh, near Parma, Ohio, Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Uh, Hocking Hills is another great area that we can, we can go do some hiking in as well. Um, and then I also have Mohican on there. Uh, I've only been to actually uh, Hocking Hills. I still have to cross off Cuyahoga. I've been to a bunch of other national parks except the one we have here, so. We're working on it though. Um, I also recommend as far as preparation, do, do a little bit of gym training. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. The big thing that I recommend is staying active, doing something. A lot of people, a lot of people are very hesitant to go to the gym, understandably so. It can be, a, it can be quite intimidating, but even like cycling was kind of my avenue to get into, get into fitness. Um, and ever since then, that's, well, that's the next step as well as cardio is to kind of keep yourself moving. I uh, recently, I'm, I'm working in Iowa right now. I worked in Seattle before that, and I work on an orthopedic unit. And it tends to be when patients kind of lose their mobility, they kind of lose, you, I don't want to say you lose everything, but you, you kind of, you kind of, if you can't move around and do what you used to do, it's very important that we kind of keep our mobility as long as we can. 
um, proper gear. As you can see, I ended up, I ended up actually overpacking uh, for a day hike. Um, that's a, that's one of the lessons I learned. Uh, I didn't really need, you know, I didn't really need binoculars. You got a really great view of everything. The blanket was a little bit excessive too. I really thought I was going to be out there for three days, and reality, you know, just it ended up kind of being a bit of a hindrance because you put, you know, a 70 liter bag, you put a lot of weight into it. Uh, you feel it by about hour eight, so. And even before that, um, food, water, and snacks definitely important. We're gonna we're gonna go over all these individually, um, and then as far as route planning and research as well, making sure you are you know you're looking into what you, you know. Mount St. Helens isn't a trail that you just, hey, honey, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go there tomorrow. We're just gonna we're just gonna get it done. You kind of want to make sure there's passes you have to buy to get up to it. Uh, parks passes as well. You got to check the weather conditions. Um, wildlife wasn't too much of an issue for me, but uh, I do have a can of bear spray that I always take with me whenever I'm out west. Again, in Ohio, we're fortunate that we don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, maybe a random coyote every now and again, but I was always bringing that whenever I worked in Montana and Seattle and whatnot. Just, you know, you, you never know. It's better to be safe, especially going on your own, which is another thing that I would not recommend doing. As you said, I went to Mount Fuji and my friend Tristan here, and uh, it, it was a lot better experience going with somebody on a hike than uh, going it on your own and safe. So uh, we learned that lesson. Uh, so a couple of Seattle hikes I ended up doing. Uh, Mount Si, that's what's pictured here. This is actually my own picture here. Uh, this, this is a great hike. It's very popular out in Seattle because it's about 30, 40 minutes outside of Seattle proper. Uh, so as you can imagine, a lot of people from the city during the summer months mob this, mob this mountain and kind of, it's a, it's a good training site for if you were to traverse Mount Rainier. Uh, Mount Rainier is 14,000 odd feet. I actually had a buddy of mine, uh, I worked with Ryan back in Seattle. He, he ended up summoning it twice. Um, had a, it's a two day trip, ended up having a camp there. But they said if you can complete Mount Si in uh, two hours, you're able to take on Rainier. If you, it, up and down. So as I, as I actually hiked Mount Si, you'd see people train for Rainier. They had either like full gallon water bottles in their, in their backpack. They'd get to the top and end up dumping them all out. That was their kind of training for it, uh, which is kind of insane. And then I also saw a guy with a couple uh, 25 pound dumbbells in his backpack as well. So as you can imagine, uh, pretty, pretty tough, pretty strenuous. He didn't dump those out and leave those at the top of the mountain though. He, he took those back down with him. Um, West Tiger 3, there's actually another set of, there's Co West Cougar and West Tiger. Those are uh, this, the, actually, I'll explain here. That's the mileage on it up and down, and then the, the elevation gains on that right there. Um, West Tiger 3 I ended up doing actually with my buddy Ryan. Um, it's, it's another set of mountains that they've had a lot of logging done to it. So you see some of it's pretty much scarred. I don't have a picture of it on here, but uh, another good area to kind of train. And again, you're still getting, you're not getting uh, the, well actually, why am I pointing? I got a laser pointer here. Uh, you're not getting as quite as high as you would on Mount St. Helens, but as you can see, it's, you're still getting somewhat of, somewhat of elevation gain going there. Uh, Maple Pass Trail, that's in the North Cascades. Uh, very, very beautiful park probably my favorite out of the three. Uh, you got Mount Rainier, you got Olympic, and you got North Cascades. Very, very beautiful trail. Um, ended up not completing that one in a loop because of how much snow was at the top. Um, and then Wallace Falls is actually another uh, uh, little hike. A lot of these are actually within driving distance, two hours or less from Seattle. Uh, so I'd work a couple shifts and then I'd have a couple days off, take the car out and you know do a little bit of hiking. So it's, it's, it's good in that regard. Um, but this, these, are, these are the main trails I did. There's a couple trails I'm gonna post, I put up at the end where things that I did after the fact. Um, those, those, those are also, uh, I highly recommend doing those trails as well if you ever, if you ever make your way out there. Um, I do recommend gym training as well. Like I said, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. The big thing is, you know, obviously you're gonna use your legs a lot. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the stair stepper, um, that's, that's something that I've been doing. Squats, deadlifts, leg press. I, again, at your own pace. Um, I also included in there rock climbing. Uh, Seattle's kind of a mecca for a lot of the rock, rock climbing community. Uh, there's about a, I was telling Craig, there's about a gym around every corner. Uh, we actually just opened one here in o Toledo uh, called Adventus, and me and Tristan go there a lot. Uh, but that's, that's also good. You know, you want to work, like I said, your lower body as well as your upper body, but as you can imagine with uh, hiking, uh, you're mostly, it's kind of more of a lower body sport, if you want to call it a sport. But like I said, with the trekking poles, I was using those a lot. Uh, you want more points of contact, especially on that shifty like ash and, uh, and broken down rock and whatnot. Um, and especially with the ice too, because as you get, as you can imagine, you get to those higher elevations, it gets pretty icy. Um, 
like I said, body weight exercises are a good idea too. Definitely, like I said, definitely, definitely more so focus on uh, on your legs uh, as much as you can. Uh, another thing that I ended up doing, uh, like I was talking about earlier, is the biking. Uh, as far as cardio, right? Your your hiking is just as much a cardio activity, uh, especially when you you get up to those higher elevations and you don't have you know the oxygen requirements that you you usually would have down at you know sea level or a little bit above sea level um, so that's kind of that was kind of my downfall a little bit and as I was getting to the top because I was like man my legs aren't as tired but I'm breathing a lot heavier and having to take more breaks and it just you know it just became kind of a became kind of a struggle men mentally physically but also mentally um, as you know I'm thinking about what's you know how much more I have left? Because I mean, you guys probably have been on a hike before where you you think you're at the end and you're like, oh, it's the end's just right there, only to realize you're about five miles left from the end. So, uh, so you know, by myself, I can talk myself in. You know, I can talk myself in to keep going. Uh, but like I said, I'll talk more about the Mount Fuji hike. But it was, I felt like this hike was a lot more strenuous because I didn't have that other person or group of people to t you know to kind of encourage each other. It just kind of was, you had to be in your own head. So I was telling Craig a little bit ago too, like as you're passing hikers, you're like. Like just starving for social you know social interaction so you're just talking anyway they're like man I'm just trying to hike this mountain and I'm just like hey how far yeah how far left you know and they don't you know they don't know but uh tread I say also treadmill with an incline as well is also a good idea even just walking um as well as some swimming like I said lower body more so and then as well as some cardio and as much as you can do biking biking is very low uh very low strenuous it's not as strenuous on your joints um that's why I, I, I really recommend it and um I don't know. I, I think I think that and the stair stepper probably helped out the most as far as with preparing for Mount St. Helens. But again, you're never going to know until you get on that hike how prepared you really are, you know. And then you can make that decision on do I keep going? Do I kind of back down? You know, when you when you're up there. Um, so with that, we can talk about we'll talk about my gear as well. Uh, you can so one big mistake, and that's going to be coming up here in a little bit, was sunscreen. I should have brought sunscreen. Uh, I had sunscreen on the list, just didn't grab it on the way out the door. Um, I left so from Seattle, Mount St. Helens is about a three-hour drive. So I woke up at 2:30. I had already bought my pass previously, and I drove up there. And of course, like you think you're prepared, you know, you look at all this stuff, and you're like, what else? What else do you need? Um, and then of course you forget one of the most important things. I also forgot bug spray as well, which again, that'll be up in a later slide. But I'll show you some of the equipment here uh, that I brought. Like I said, hindsight, I uh, saw Craig, I passed a couple people on the trail. They were in like New Balances, shorts, light backpack, just, and here I am carrying about 60, 50 pounds worth of gear on my back the whole time thinking, you know, why did I do this? Uh, so got the first aid kit. Uh, I always I always grab more than I need. Again, it's the over preparer in me. Um, had uh, the main thing that I used in this a lot, and I was fortunate that I didn't have anything major happen, uh, broken bone or you know, big cut or gash. But the main thing is I keep my iodine tablets in here. Um, I don't know if you guys are too familiar, probably are, but you can use those to help kind of purify water because at the end of the hike. Uh, I have three liters worth of water. I've only ever run out of water once, uh, and that was in uh, Guadalupe Mountain in Texas, so that's the tallest point in Texas. Um, and I ran out once, and as you can imagine, Texas, dry heat, you're sweating a lot. A lot of the hikes I was doing in uh, Seattle, Mount St. Helens, you don't really you don't really sweat too much. It's a more temperate climate. Um, so I thought, hey, once I usually when I go on hikes like this, I, I'll pack this, and once this is empty, uh, I go I switch over to this, and I know I, this is how much water I have left for the rest of the hike. Now, when I got to the top, this was empty. This was empty as well. So as you can imagine, kind of in a tight spot. But the main thing that kind of kept me. I ended up marking, so I highly recommend, uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anyway, they're not paying me to you know, plug National Geographic, but uh, getting one of these maps, uh, I ended up marking on it where as I was hiking up, like as you can imagine, there's snow at the top melting, it was, it was the end of summer. Uh, there's a lot of springs that you can get some water from. Now, I don't just trust any old water source, you know, I play it safe, so I ended up, was able to end up fill this a couple more times using the iodine tablets and uh, was able to make it off uh, without it. But usually, usually, like I said, this stays full. I have maybe about a liter or half a liter left by the end of a hike. Um, the problem is I don't, I'm not taking this out every so, like my bag is, this is buried in the bottom of the bag. I'm not taking it out every so often to check how much water I have. I just know when that's done, it's, we should be kind of on the down climb, so. Um, so I grabbed that as well. Uh, oh, my Garmin SOS beacon. Now, I just bought this. 
actually a couple weeks beforehand. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it in the back. Basically, uh, as you can imagine, GPS, but also uh, with a subscription service, like 10 bucks a month, you can, uh, if you get into a, quite a pickle, as I did, you can call, hit the SOS button and get rescued. But who wants to do that? You know, it's, it's embarrassing to get rescued, so. But, but if I needed to, uh, I had that available. So another, another good thing to kind of stay prepared for. Like I said, I recommend it on any of the big, any big hikes, even like, I would say even like Hocking Hills or anything like that, I would still recommend it, because you never know. You know, it takes one trip and fall to, you know, sprain your ankle or, so it's always good to be prepared, especially if you're hiking alone. Um, but again, I don't recommend, but if you do, uh, and then also some mountaineering boots, which uh, these came in uh, real, real handy. Uh, I bought these, they're Scarpa. Scarpa is kind of a big climbing brand as well. But I don't know if you guys can see on the back here, there's a spot here. In the video you're gonna see, I ended up borrowing a pair of crampons. I don't know if you guys are too familiar with those, but basically, uh, well, I have ice spikes too, but the crampons are kind of a more aggressive version of that, and that's to really help you dig into the ice and keep traction. Um, but I had these just in case, but I knew once I got on that thick ice, I was still sliding around a little bit on these. These just fit on the uh, underside of your boot. Um, but I knew like, hey, this ice is getting kind of aggressive, especially towards the top, you get towards a little bit more of that incline as you get to the, get to the rim. Uh, so those helped out a lot. I didn't bring those, but we're, I have a picture of those and I'll show you guys. Uh, bandana and hat is a good one as well. Uh, since I, since I uh, unfortunately didn't bring the sunscreen, uh, I was able to keep a lot of the sun off my neck. I ended up, after the fact, going to the hospital. People thought I, people thought I was at the beach uh, too long and fell asleep, but I was like, no, I climbed Mount St. Helens and I uh, got a little too cooked. But I had this on, you'll see it in the video as well, uh, covering my face, covering the back of my neck as best as I could. The other thing was, is as you get, as you get up there, uh, I, had a, I had a layer jacket here. Uh, helped keep me warm, a little bit too warm. Uh, you know, and you, you think about it, you're losing a lot of sweat out that way too when you're too warm, so it's always good to take off uh, your thermal gear. Um, but with that, I didn't have any coverage on my arms as well, so those got pretty, pretty well cooked. Uh, ice axe, um, didn't do any as far as ice climbing, but uh, there's a point in the video you're gonna see where I end up, it's called, how, how many of you are familiar with the term glissading? So basically, uh, when you're, you can make the trip down a lot faster, again, this kind of got me in a little trouble by holding onto the axe and kind of digging in and sliding down, kind of controlling the direction and uh, the momentum that you're gaining. Because as you can imagine, as you're getting towards that peak, going up it is steep, going down it's just as steep. Uh, so you want to be very, very careful and choose where you go save wisely. As I was going down though, I didn't have much choice. Um, I had to make a couple, couple of decisions based on like trying to get off this mountain before nightfall hit and you know had to choose either a lot of sketchy volcanic rock or sliding down and trying to stop myself so it was a uh, quite quite scary um, I ended up tearing up my hiking pants that I had there too because they also recommend bringing a trash bag I didn't know why I saw a lot of people up there with trash bag I just thought they brought a lot of food and that's where they were throwing it all away uh, but no that was actually to put on so they could slide and not tear up their pants like I did so uh, and then also the thermal jacket, we just pointed that out as well. Crampon and spikes, waterproof map. I also, I'm also like getting into as far as like looking for, hunting for mushrooms, not picking them of course, because odds are I'd always pick the most dangerous ones and uh, I'm not willing to take that risk. But I always grab that just to kind of, it's a little something, it's not too much in the pack, but you know, if I was to find something, you know, a little fun. Uh, warm layers, I also have a bunch of rechargeable batteries especially for the camera, uh, the, uh, the beacon, as well as the, uh, my phone. Uh, I was telling Craig a little bit about this. I was surprised, uh, my dad could attest this, I called him and my mom a couple times, how, how good, much good service I had up on, up on the mountain itself. So, uh, so that, was very, that was very fortunate that uh, I was able to do that. Uh, and then sunglasses, of course, cell phone. Um, I also brought a knife, you know, you never know. First aid kit and then the hiking pants. Um, I mean, I also had my wallet and ID and all that, but you know, that's, everyone has that. Uh, next here. So also recommend food, water, and snacks, of course. Uh, I, I, again, with this, I also over-prepared. Um, I'm not sponsored by any of these brands. I just, you know, or if, if they're watching the live stream, you know, hit me up. 
But I have, uh, I took a lot of, a lot of this is what I normally use when I go cycling. So the Honey Stinger waffles, I don't know if you guys probably seen them around in stores. A lot of hiking stores have them. Uh, REI and up, up in Ann Arbor stocks them. The goose as well. The main thing is it's a lot of uh, carbs, a lot of quick carbs, easy carbs. When you're cycling, you don't want to be eating a heavy sandwich. You don't want to be eating a bowl of soup or, uh, you know, like nachos. Because uh, it's just kind of kind of be heavy. So I kind of took from that and I had a couple of these as well just to, to give me that quick energy, especially as I was getting close to the top. Um, liquid IV is something else I use. Uh, I, mainly, I mainly put a couple of those, uh, replace your electrolytes as you can imagine. When your electrolytes start to kind of plummet, which you lose that with sweat, uh, you, uh, you want to prevent cramps. So I ended up putting a couple in this bag and then I had a couple extra just in case. Cramps, like I said, cramps really weren't the issue, it was just kind of running out of gas at the top. Um, but these, these I highly, rec I highly recommend. Uh, there's other stuff out there um, that's probably just as good, but this is just kind of what I was using. Um, we already talked about replacing electrolytes to reduce the cramps, and then bring enough water based on the length of the hike. Which again, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize. I thought, I mean, this three liters is, you know, it's a lot of water. And like I said, I never ever went through it except one other time, and I was already almost near the bottom. Basically, I was like drinking air, probably about a mile left down that hike, and then, then I always know I at least have that. But always good to have more more than you think you need because there's a lot of times especially when I was hiking in Texas and uh, when I'd hike in Arizona a lot of people would maybe bring like, like well like this Gatorade bottle worth of water and it's like man you know you're, you're going on a five six mile hike this you know you're gonna need a lot more than that you're gonna lose a lot more in sweat um, then you do that so always bring more than you actually need um, so with that, we, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Mount St. Helens, a little bit of facts here. Uh, last eruption was May 18th, 1980, uh, so was that 43 years ago. Uh, Mount St. Helens can erupt every 100 to 300 years. Uh, every, in the last 500 years, it's erupted at least four times. So I was telling Craig, I was like, you know, I was doing the math in my head, 1980 to uh, 2023, I felt like I was in a pretty good spot. I will say, when I was looking on the news and kind of looking on the National Park site, uh, there was a little bit more activity going on than usual at that time, so that really, you know, upped my fear a little bit. Um, it's one of the most monitored volcanoes in the U.S., as you can imagine. It goes off every one to 300 years. You'd want to keep a good eye on it. Mount Rainier is another volcano. That goes off, I want to say, every 3,000 years, so not as monitored, uh, but still, just, you know, a little bit more dangerous. Uh, 1,300 feet ended up being removed from the top. So when Mount St. Helens erupted, uh, it blew out of the north side. So uh, towards Seattle, towards there's a town called Morton right there, uh, and kind of took off 1,300 feet. So as you can imagine, I was pretty. I tried and spin things in a positive way. Uh, very, you know, very devastating uh, event. But it, I thought, hey, at least I don't have 1,300 feet to finish the climb. Right? Uh, that's 1,300 less feet that I have to I have to climb. And it was actually the largest landslide in U.S. history. Um, I ended up having a coworker in Seattle. Um, her husband lived in Morton. He was about, he said he was about two, three years old when the eruption happened. And uh, his mom and dad were actually at a wedding that day. And I was asking him questions like, man, like, did people know like it was going to go off? They're like, well, you know, people were talking about it. And like, they didn't know when it was going to go off, but they knew it was getting more active. Uh, so he ended up, he saw that he had his bike and everything outside. He saw all the ash come down and he, he thought it was snowing in June, you know? So he was, he was, he was kind of excited. Meanwhile, his parents are freaking out trying to get back to get, get him and his brother. Uh, so he, uh, but Morton's not too, I was gonna say, not too far away from there. I mean, as you can imagine, that ash kind of hangs out there for a bit. And it's still like on the side of the mountain, very, very ashy and very, very slippery in some spots. Uh, e even with the crampons and everything I had on, I was taking two steps forward, sliding down one step. So as you can imagine how disheartening that would be uh, going through that. Uh, so route planning and research, uh, you want to research the safe seasons. Uh, Seattle, generally a lot of their parks, uh, it's, it's pretty snowy once you get up in the, the higher elevations there. Uh, so during winter, generally it's closed. Uh, my brother and his wife ended up going and there was still a lot of snow. This was back in April and there was still a lot of snow. So generally, I actually went on June 29th of this year. Um, so that's kind of the sweet spot where you're getting less snow until you get to the top, less ice and things are starting to melt before it starts to pick back up again in the winter. Um, research the wildlife there, obviously, uh, black bear country, uh, mountain lion country, uh, you got elk, 
not really, not really much moose. Uh, that's more in Wyoming near Yellowstone. Uh, but just kind of being aware. Like I said, I packed. I've, I've had this bear spray since 2021 when I was in Montana. Never used it, but you know, you always want to be prepared just in case. Honestly, I don't even know if it still works. Uh, Cause it's been, I don't know how long that lasts, but hopefully it does. Uh, research the weather beforehand. Uh, like I said, you don't want to go in a torrential blizzard. You don't want to go in a torrential downpour. I mean, unless that's your thing, I prefer to hike in the sun when it's clear. You get better views that way. Uh, fog's another issue uh, as you're getting up in higher elevations there. Um, it can be, be kind of treacherous, especially trying to find the path. Uh, I ended up going on a clear day, which again ended up causing me a lot of sunburn because as you can imagine, getting up to the top there, uh, you're not getting much cloud coverage uh, without sunscreen. You're basically you're basically cooked. Uh, research closures and admission requirements. So the trail I took was the Worm Flows Trail. That is about a mile lower than the Partridge Ridge Trail, which was my original uh, destination. I thought, hey, I could save myself more more of the climb. Uh, so I had to kind of backpedal and realize, oh, that's going to be a, a little bit of a harder trail than I originally intended. But it's good to do research on that and research on any requirements you need as far as like passes. They actually have a book right at the entrance to make sure you sign out what car you're in, how many people are with you, emergency contacts. It's, it's, it's fairly, fairly serious of a climb. Uh, and also, uh, you can search the web for reviews on trails. I recommend all trails. Uh, Washington Trail Association is also really good, but again, that's not going to help you much out here in the Midwest or anywhere else besides Washington. But all trails, you can look up people and say, hey, I was just on this trail yesterday. These were the conditions. This is what I had. Very, very, uh, very good uh, source of information, especially because, you know, you get you get climbing uh, you get climbers of all levels right and you kind of get their two cents on things um, so it's really really uh, it's really a good source of information there um, I give that oh there we go oh. So then I was gonna play this short video for you. I kind of put this together. Uh, generally when I go to a lot of the national parks, um, I kind of, for my family and friends on Facebook, I kind of put a video together just so that they can kind of see what, you know, how, how it was. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to watch. So we'll, uh, I'll have Craig pull that up. Less is more, but if less is more, how you keep in score? It means 
I don't know if you saw, I want to, I want to point out a couple things with that video. Um, there's a lot towards, as I'm getting to the top, you kind of see me crouch down with, with, those, um, with those trekking poles, just every 10 steps I was gassed. You know, and like I said, we went over, uh, you know, doing some cardio weight, like even with that, even with the hikes, I was still just, I was mentally, I felt more prepared, but like my body, I could tell was really, was just really not going for it. Um, on top of that, like I said, that sun was beating me down. There's a, there's a part in that video where you see me putting ice on my arms because of how burnt they are. Again, should have, you know, should have remembered the sunscreen, could have avoided all that, but you know, too late now. Um, the other thing is, you know, that glissading that we had talked about with the ice axe, uh, you look, you know, as you're getting to the top, you, you know, you're, it's getting more and more, you're getting more and more of a steep incline. So, you know, you gotta come up, you gotta come down. Uh, so you're looking down and then it's like, looks like roller coaster ride that you're just gonna keep tumbling. So it's like you had to pick and choose with where you glissaded. Uh, the problem was, oh here, let's see if I can. There we go. Uh, I'll tell you about some key mistakes that I had. Uh, lack of sunscreen, which we've talked about. Lack of bug spray. Uh, little altitude training. Um, you know, which after I got off, off the mountain, talked to my buddy uh, Ryan, like, he, who did Mount Rainier, and he's like, "Yeah, he's like that. Really, you know, that really makes a lot of sense. You know, you're not really used to it too much. You know, you do a little bit of training, but you got, you know, doing a little bit more hikes with elevation would probably would probably help. Uh, not paying attention was the uh, probably the biggest one that was uh, my problem." So with all trails, that was, you know, I had the map saved on my phone. I had the paper map. I was marking things down. Um, but as I was glissading, I'm like, man, like, this is going to be a breeze. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make it down. The hard part's over without realizing instead of going back down the trail I was supposed to go, I ended up going on a different trail entirely. The other trail would have taken me, like I said, about a mile lower than I actually needed to be, and I would have had to hike back up another mile. Um, sun was getting low. So I kind of made the decision of like, man, I gotta just make it over to the other trail. As you can imagine, it's not very developed, uh, very treacherous, lots of loose boulders, uh, lots of, you know, a few crevasses. So it became, it became a point of this isn't so much, the, fun, the fun's over, we got to the top now, and now it's like getting to a little bit more dangerous territory. Um, important thing was I had the beacon. The other thing was uh, I ended up having, uh, you know, I was able to call my dad and my mom. Um, and kind of was able to talk with them and let them, you know, let them know that I was okay. Every 15 minutes, I was checking in with them. Uh, I found my fresh water, fresh water source that I purified, so I was good there. And I kind of, at one point, had sat down on, on some loose rock and just kind of looked at where I knew the trail was and where I was. And every so often, I'd, I'd go through, I'd go say down an area and be like, perfect, the trail's right there, only to look over the ridge and there was more rocks. Another puzzle that I had to solve. Um, and that went on for about another two or three hours uh, I have this I have the stats all my stats up there on all trails of what uh, how long it took me I ended up going moving time eight hours it was 15 hours total for the whole trip now mind you this is a trail that usually only takes people eight hours but because of all the missteps that I had taken, uh, I was walking out of that, and it, it was it was nightfall. So, uh, being overprepared, uh, I talked about that as well. Um, 
If I will say this, if I was to have to stay up, if I ended up something happened, I needed to stay up there, I would have been, I feel like I would have been prepared. I, like I said, I didn't need the blanket, but it would have helped definitely uh, if I was stuck up there. Uh, as well as the extra food, I actually brought out like two, two to three different meals, or like sandwiches and stuff and snacks. And like I said, I had those, those uh, a lot of those uh, quick carbs, um, which was another thing is I packed a lot more carbs than protein. Generally, when you want, uh, quick energy, you know, something to help you quick, you choose carbs over protein. Protein takes a lot longer to actually break down um, and is a little bit more heavy. Uh, but with that being said, uh, these, were, these are actually the stats, uh, the numbers here. Uh, as you can see, like I said, 10.7 10 10 miles was what it ended up being. I ended up gaining about 1,000 feet of elevation by mile four going up. Uh, so that's, in, in that short a span, that's quite, quite, a lot of, uh, quite a lot of time. I, I did give it three stars, you know, I almost didn't make it, but you know, it was still a good trail. Uh, and then these are all the, also the other numbers of how much, how much I actually hiked. Oh. Um, but with that being said too, wow, 5,253 calories. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe that's accurate, but that's there as well. Um, with that being said, uh, I had a lot going on at the time, uh, emotionally for me as well. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of go into this with you guys. I don't think my wife would, wife would mind. Um, but we ended up, you know, we've been married, we've been traveling together, uh, you know, doing the travel nursing, uh, gig for a while. Uh, actually been married since 2017. We've been together for about nine years. Um, the day before my birthday, she, she ended up, uh, not, we plan on having kids. We have a house here in Sylvania and she ended up telling me, you know, she didn't, she didn't want to have kids anymore. So as you can imagine, you know, my mindset is I'm like, thought, you know, this relationship, everything was going well. And I, uh, you know, when you feel you don't have control of a situation, uh, you try and do something to kind of make you feel like you're back in control. And I, I kind of chose this as like, you know, hey, this is gonna, this is gonna be do or die. I'm either gonna make it to the top or not. You know, you, when, you're, when you're in a situation like that, I mean, I'm sure some, you know, all of you have gone through something similar or something traumatic, you know, some, some kind of trauma. You feel like, you know, you, you, you just lost control. Um, so the mindset I was in is I was like, I'm going to get to the top and if I have to stay up there, you know, I have all this, you know, and, and again, probably not the best state of mind to be in, uh, but that's just kind of where my head was. And I kind of thought, man, this mountain was a, what a, like an emotional battle as much as a physical battle, you know, to kind of feel like give it, you know, kind of like I have some sort of control in my life. Um, and you know, and I, I also like have gone through, you know, like going through COVID and everything like that, working in the hospitals, uh, you know, it can, it, it can, it can wear on you, uh, mentally. You know, I saw, I saw kids, I'm 29, you know, I saw kids my age, 25, you know, dying, you know, it's, 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 it's heavy stuff. And I kind of changed my mindset to, you know, a lot of times I feel like we wait to do these things, right? We wait to go on hikes. We wait to, we wait to go on that trip. We'll wait till, you know, wait till we're older. And it's like, it's never usually, uh, always guaranteed. Um, so I, you know, my mindset's always been now I'm going to do as much as I can while I can, while I have my mobility, while I'm able to do this, like, cause you know, some people are never, you know, some people don't have the opportunity to, to, to do stuff like this. Um, so I just, I just thought go, you know, going to the top like that. Uh, and you know, it was just very, I, 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 I ended up crying at the top and then only to, only to realize I was getting way off trail. So I ended up, you know, at the time, me and my wife got in a big fight and, you know, I had a moment, like I said, where I was sitting down on these rocks and I was like, do I really want the last thing? If, if I was, something was to happen and I, you know, was to die here, do I really want the last thing, you know, for me to say to her, you know, was me fighting with her. Um, so I ended up calling her and, you know, apologizing and everything like that. Um, and then just kept calling my parents and they were checking in with me. Uh, so as I was uh, actually exiting the trail, um, you can imagine bit up by bugs, sunscreen, just sweat, grime everywhere. There's people in the parking lot car camping and they just see this guy stumble out of the woods and they're like, what the heck happened to this guy? You know, I, I, I scared a few people. And then the other thing was, is right. So on the mountain had perfect cell service, right? Like I could get a hold of anybody I wanted to. And then as soon as I uh, hit the parking lot, gone. So my parents, my parents think something happened to me in the woods, something got me. So I was like, oh, cause I was originally, I was going to sleep in the car and then drive back to Seattle. Cause 
as you can imagine, getting getting all that sun, losing all that um, losing all that water. I was I was a little uh, I was a little goofy to say the least. Like my mind was very very worn down. So I'm like, oh, they probably think I'm dead. So I had to drive a little bit and eventually got uh, got in touch with them and called them. But um, but you know I just think I, a lot of this. Uh, I don't know if you guys are too familiar with uh, a guy named Tommy Caldwell. Uh, he's a big time climber. Uh, he ended up uh, he ended up being married. Uh, was doing a lot of rock doing a lot of rock climbing in uh, Yosemite. And uh, him and him and his wife uh, actually overseas. They were doing some climbing and ended up getting captured, uh, you know, by 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 a few terrorists and uh, were ended up being held there for a while. Very very traumatic experience, right? To go through that, but to go through that with your partner as well. Not sure if you're gonna, and I'm not comparing his situation to my situation at all. I'm just using this as an example. But uh, he uh, he ended up starting this journey to climb. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with El Capitan, big big mountain, big rock face out in Yosemite. Um, ended up being the first one. Uh, it wasn't solo, but scale it. There's some record he ended up doing. But in the middle of it, uh, his wife ended up divorcing him. Um, and as you can imagine, very very like sad, you know, very sad situation. Like they went through all this stuff together. They climbed together. They met through climbing. They ended up, uh, you know, going through this horrific situation overseas while they were climbing. And then he didn't, you know, it would have been so much easier for him to just give up and just quit and just, you know choose poor coping, but what he ended up doing is going right back to that wall and he just kept trying to climb it. Um, I think a lot of times in our lives we can kind of, we have an opportunity to either do something or we can kind of just sit around and let, you know, kind of let the world get to us and kind of let us get defeated. Um, I have another situation and I'm not, and uh, I won't mention her name, but it's a coworker I have back in Iowa. Um, and she, uh, she wouldn't mind me telling the story either, but, if I start tearing up over this, don't, you know, don't mind me, but she, uh, she ended up 16 years old, had a baby uh, in high school, ended up graduating high school, um, and she promised herself, she's like, you know what, I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna give this little girl the best life, you know, she ever had, I'm gonna get through nursing school and I'm gonna make it happen. She was in, uh, she ended up being in the Des Moines paper uh, for this, got her nursing degree, her and her daughter were happy. Um, at the beginning of the year, um, you know, daughter was being bullied at school. Uh, she ended up uh, hanging herself, and uh, my coworker, um, she had to be the one to take her down off the rope. Did everything, um, and just a very, very strong person. And she's right now. She's about to finish NP school. You think someone go through somebody so, something so horrific like that, and then to still push forward, it's just, it, it makes me think like this, com, compare, this is, doing something like this is nothing compared to, compared to going, you know, going like that. So it's, she's now in NP school. She said, my daughter would have wanted me to finish this. Um, and, and you know, I'm doing it for her. Like what a, what a strong person it takes to go through something that horrific and still keep pushing forward despite everything. Uh, it just makes me realize that any of us, any of us can do this. Any of us can go out, hike, go have a goal and complete it. Um, you know, we have it, I feel like we have it all within us. It's just a matter of, you know, how, much, how bad do you want it? Um, so I think, you know, I think of her a lot and her, her situation and she's just, type of nurse that patient could cuss her out, patient could yell at her and she'll kill him with kindness. You know, she's, she's just a very, very awesome person. Um, so with that being said, we'll go to our next slide here, maybe. So a couple of adventures that I've been on since Mount St. Helens. Uh, I mentioned Mount Fuji uh, with my buddy Tristan. Uh, we ended up we ended up doing that actually back in August. Um, another t different type of hike, right? You start at I want to say 5,000 feet, but the, uh, and you end up going, or it's a little bit more than that, about 8,000. Anyway, so but you start at the fifth station about halfway up, and then you make it to the top. I don't want to say it was easier, definitely more strenuous, but I wasn't on my own at that time, right? You had thirty, you had thirty other people going with you. They had guide station at the front, a guy, and then three in the middle, and then one at the back. Uh, actually, there's probably a few more than that, but very much more structured. Uh, you weren't going to get lost because these guys have been up and down it so many times. Uh, so ended up ended up doing that, and that was that was an amazing experience as well. Um, 
same, similar, similar type of environment though. Actually, it wasn't, too, wasn't really snowy at the top, but you definitely had a lot more of that loose rock, uh, a lot of that dust. Um, sunscreen was a must, but we, we were pretty much in cloud coverage for most of it until we got, until we got to the top. And we ended up, uh, make, it was a two-day trip. So you get to the, there's uh, eight stations. There's a couple substations in between there that you can stop for food, snacks. Um, so it's, you know, they didn't have any of that at Mount St. Helens. They, had, they even had uh, vending machines up at the top, which I was like, Thought that was crazy, uh, but yeah. So they had many machines at the top, and then uh, there's a hut at the A station. So just you have a little bit of a stretch left uh, to go to the top. We ended up staying in the hut. The interesting thing about the hut is you're up at that high elevation. You know your body's trying to get used to it. You get up to go to the bathroom and you're winded. You know you're just you're like wow. Why is it so hard for me to like just move around up here? It's just because the lack of you know lack of oxygen and all that that you have up there. Um, but definitely definitely a uh, wonderful experience. I highly highly recommend that. Um, Oyster Dome's another uh, another trail out in um, Bellingham, Washington. It's between uh, the Canada-Seattle border uh, up there in the Cascades. Very, very beautiful view of the Pacific Ocean. Um, not, not as, it's not as strenuous as I'd say probably Mount Si was, but it's, it's a, uh, it's very, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's worth doing, worth doing for the view, especially, especially if you're in the area. And then uh, currently, I'm working in Iowa. Uh, there's. We get a lot of flack, I feel like, out in the Midwest. So a lot of my friends in Seattle, they, they are giving me grief for coming to Iowa. They're like, oh, what's there to even do? Can't you stand on a box and see the whole state? They, 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 they think because they got the mountains of the ocean, they got it way better than us. And, you know, but there's still things for, you know, there's still things for us to do. And I think you just got to look for it in your community. You know, Ohio is the same exact way. We got, we got plenty of hikes out here. Um, we got some, some of the greatest marshlands in the area, uh, Manhattan Marsh. Uh, you know, and we were originally, you know, if you're, you guys are probably familiar with Toledo, you know, used to be the black swamp you know this was this is our identity um, so we got a lot that we can explore locally um, but backbone state park uh, actually went with my family there we did a lot of hiking a uh, little bit a little bit of climbing um, but definitely like i said if, if you just look for it you, you can find stuff to do um, i think we got a couple more pictures here so there's some pictures from Mount Fuji. Uh, that was actually the sunrise that, we, that I took a picture of. Uh, this, was, this is just proof that I did actually did make it to the top. Uh, and then they have uh, these Tory gates here as well. And uh, those are scattered throughout. Uh, 12,388 feet. Oh, I do have the numbers here. So 7,874 feet. They measured in meters. Um, but this is, this is I, I just changed it to feet. And then we did a two-day two day journey starting at the Fujisan Hotel. And as you can imagine, starting there and then get, getting up to here, you're going to be breathing a little bit heavy. Uh, but all in all, it was a good experience. And then I think I have some pictures of Oyster Dome as well. Yep, Oyster Dome there. That's the view you get at the top. Uh, like I said, great. You get, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you get a good picture of the San Juan Islands as well. That's uh, 1,896 feet, 6.3 miles total up and back. Oh, with any of the mileages, I don't know if I mentioned this, but that's not just straight up, that's up and back as well. So think about 3.1 and some change miles up and back. Um, but also, also a great hike. And then this is uh, this is the Backbone State Park that we ended up going to, and this is this is right here back uh, in our backyard, right here in the Midwest. Uh, you know, you got some cr uh, crevices here to climb through. Got good views of the uh, Makokura River. Um, there's us. But again, you know, this is this is all right here. I mean, it's Iowa, where I live in Cedar Rapids, is about seven hours away. But you got you got stuff in. I mean, we got a national park in Indiana. We got a national park in Ohio. Uh, you know, we we got plenty of stuff that we can do around here. Um, you know, to kind of get our feet wet and uh, kind of get our start. Uh, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, some local hiking trails. Uh, looks like, you know, Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Uh, again, it's on my list, and, and it's, it's, it's so interesting because I've been to most of the West Coast except well, I, yeah, I've been actually except Alaska and Hawaii and then Mississippi, and I've never even been to Pennsylvania, and we're right next door to them. So, uh, so, so I still have some things to do locally. You know, e like even me, who's been, you know, who's been out to Washington, Oregon, all those areas, um, there's, still, there's still plenty here that I, I still want to get done. Uh, Mohican State Part 2 comes highly recommended as well. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else. Is this the end, Craig? There we go. Uh, so if you guys have any questions or anything like that, I, I was going to point out too in that video, uh, 
there's three mountains that you can see kind of, and as I was climbing up the mountain, you can't really see, uh, you know, you're looking straight at the mountain, you're just thinking about getting to the top, you're not looking around, but uh, Mount Hood, so I was hiking up the south side, you could see a video in that video, Mount Hood, way off in the back, that's in Oregon right near Portland, so right across the border. Um, and then as I'm climbing up to my right, you have Mount Adams, and then you don't get to see Mount Rainier until you get exactly to the top and look over uh, to kind of the north, north, uh, northeast side. Um, um, until you got to see it. So it's uh, plenty of good views. I didn't mind, I took a ton of breaks. As you can see, 15 hours total. Uh, I ended up sitting down, taking a lot of breaks, getting taken in the views. Uh, so it was definitely, uh, definitely a good, uh, good, uh, good experience that way, so. Dakota, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, guys. So uh, before we get to questions, if you have any for Dakota, um, I know I do. Um, but before we get to questions, um, I do want to officially uh, end our, our talk tonight. So if you need to go, we got something to do, or you're like, I am fulfilled by that, I'm gonna take that home, I'm gonna sleep on it, I'm gonna be really inspired when I wake up tomorrow, because I definitely will, um, then this would be the opportunity for you to uh, escort yourself out if you would like. Um, but this is the second of our Basecamp Stories speaker series. We've got four more talks, uh, two in January and two in February. Um, we've got paddlers, we've got hikers, we've got a, uh, an ecologist who works for Yellowstone National Park doing wolf research. That's pretty sweet. So if you want to find out and sign up for any of those talks, you go to wcparks.org and you can sign up for that one just like you did for this one. So again, thanks everybody and we'll open up to questions for Dakota. But you can leave if you would like. Take cookies. <laughs> yeah. I thought there was a lottery you had to have to get up St. Helens. There is. So with with that, uh, I did a lot of refreshing. So generally, uh, seven people have seven days to claim their lottery, and if they don't, it goes back in the system. So a lot of the uh, a lot of the days that we're getting closer to, I kept closer to the 29th, because I had to I had to work out my work schedule too and figure out what day would work. I was actually supposed to go with another buddy, but he had to work, and I'm like, if I'm gonna get this hike done before I leave Seattle, we're gonna have to gonna have to do that. But yeah, so if you look on their website, it'll look it'll look full. Like, oh, everyone's everyone's already bought tickets but then as it gets closer and people don't claim their tickets plans come up people change plans you have an opportunity to pick up and picking up one ticket versus picking up like five or six is a lot easier um, you know and the one that and there's every time I looked there would be like two three